Today we're making a bathroom mirrored vanity that slides. This project is made out of two by sixes. The ones I had were scrap pieces that were pretty beaten up. So I started by just trimming off the split ends before cutting the two end pieces, which will be 14 inches long. I'm making the cuts with my circular saw guided by my Craig portable cross cut. This is a really handy way to make nice perpendicular cuts using this most basic of power tools. For the shelves, I'm going with 46 inches of length and I cut three of these pieces. You could go longer though, if you wanted to. I'm using a 24 inch diameter mirror and it has these two metal brackets glued on the back. And to make the sliding hardware, I'm gonna cut some aluminum L sections that I picked up from Home Depot. You can cut thin aluminum like this with a circular saw, you just wanna go slow. I marked some lines that matched with the brackets and then drilled holes that will allow me to bolt the angle sections to the mirror. I then drilled holes between both pieces of aluminum so I could bolt them together as well. Drilling the holes left some little burrs in the aluminum, so I just sanded those down with my orbital sander and 150 grit paper. Now I can do a quick test fit. So I bolted the aluminum to the mirrors and then saw where the down fin lines up with the top shelf. This is so that I can cut a groove about halfway through the top shelf that will allow the whole mirror to slide on it. I used my Craig straight edge guide and then made three cuts with my circular saw just about three quarters of an inch deep. I used the Craig 720 Pro pocket hole jig to drill pocket holes in the two long shelves and in the back support. I sanded everything with 150 grit sandpaper and was ready to assemble. This little corner clamp from Craig is really handy. It just locks the pieces in at 90 degrees so they can easily drive in the screws. I started with the top shelf, added a couple of screws to connect the back support to the top shelf, added in the bottom shelf, and then drove the rest of the screws from the back support and into the side panels. You could use wood putty to fill in the holes, but a dowel that you then flush cut with a Japanese pull saw is another nice option. You do gotta do a little bit of sanding afterwards to clean everything up. I removed all the dust and applied a penetrating oil stain. Now the screw heads were sticking out a little bit and there was a little gap between the aluminum and the wood. So I just cut a quarter inch piece of MDF to use as a spacer. And I also cut some of these thick felt pads. These are gonna go on either side of the screw heads. They're gonna create a nice sliding surface and they'll just keep the screw heads from digging into the soft wood. Since this is the final assembly, I used lock washers. That's just gonna keep the nuts from coming loose over time. I located three studs for this four foot long shelf and then drilled through the back support, through the drywall, and into the studs. I used two by sixes, so that means the shelf is five and a half inches wide, but you could go down to two by fours with a three and a half inch wide shelf or all the way up to two by eights. If you had a larger mirror, you could add a third shelf in the middle. What I like about this project is that we made our own hardware. We took advantage of the clips that were already on the mirror. Now, if you ordered a mirror that didn't have those clips, I recommend a structural adhesive or a two-part epoxy to glue a strip of wood and give yourself a lot of surface area to work with that'll create a really secure connection. You don't want the mirror falling. You could also put the mirror in a frame, which gives you all sorts of options for attaching it to the track. This slides really good. But if you want to make it even better, you can look at some of the YouTube videos on the Homemade Modern channel. If you look way, 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 way back when I was in Boston, I actually did one where I made ball bearing hardware. Now that costs a little bit more. This is super cost effective and well, it doesn't get much easier than this as a DIY project. Uh, hit the subscribe button down below and check out all the tools that we use. They're listed in the description. All right, thanks, bye.